delicate strains of high-hearted song wafted over the rolling grasslands of Echenor, caressing the ears of beasts and greenery alike, bumping down the ribbon of Sandy Road, came a caravan of joyous travelers returning from the wide seashore. Like a spilled bowl of chum, Sumpy the Hobgoblin collapsed at the overbearing sight of glory that gleamed in eternal merrymaking. At the sight of Sumpy's collapsed lump, the leader of the caravan stood up and stamped his feet, and then a dozen of his folk, clad in white, leapt from the wagons and danced about the Hobgoblin and began to sing. Arise, arise, let me doleful fellow. The sun is high, the grass is green, the daisies tall and yellow. So stop your woes and swallow your pride and stop your constant sorrow. So up, up, and move your lungs, yup! Grinning vacantly, Stumpy allowed himself to be pulled to his feet by the dancing creatures and joined in the final yup. As he got to his feet, he rolled his head to the side to look up at the tall and masterful creatures, but was ashamed at his crooked spine and looked back at the ground. Don't waste your voices on me. Nobody ever cared about me. <laughs> the Lusterfield being laughed merrily. Do not be so full of shame, friend. My name is Stavel Quim, and I travel these lands with a skip and a bounce. These behind me are my friends, and we wish for you to join us on our adventure. Ha 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 ha! No, no, I really can't. Wept Thumpy. My master would never allow it. I, I, I have many labors to complete. Still today, I must dig the new slime pit. Master! Spot the half manticore with a curl of his lip. Shackle yourself to no one. Live free or live not. Yes, sir, if, if you say so. For I would not want to cross such a large fellow as you. Sumpy's lower lip quivered a little at the thought of the consequences of his decision. Quim laughed in a manner that shook the dirt out of Thumpy's thin hair. <laughs> Perhaps you wonder, as many do, what the nature of the quest you have just taken part of. <laughs> it is to find the great wizard Nippledore, for he alone can defeat the dark tide of sea goats. I just came from the sea, and they are numerous and evil. Why? is what is right, that which is light, and that which is dark is not. And why was I chosen to bear this charge? Should there be a limit to how much I can kill? To answer my query, I have but one thing to say. I will slay all who stand in my way. <laughs> Far across the sea, in whisks of jubilee, among the creatures known as the Manticore. A cub was born, and an oath was sworn. Justice, justice to all creatures of the light. And who shall stand, neither beast nor man, for I shall bring down unbridled justice upon all those who would dare to oppose me. Look upon the morning light and see the fight that is meant to be. Now gird at me in tranquility and know that I will stand for what is pure. When darkness falls and you begin to die, know that I will be there to kill that which is unpure. Now east I sail, where the field is stale, and I will bring freshness anew, like a tomato plant in the spring. So heed my call, now's no time to stall, unless you wish to fall into the pit unpure history. Now kill, kill, 
those who deserve to die. Let none of them live. Then feast, feast, dine upon the flesh, for they shall fall upon my claws. My task is set. My talons chiseled. Now, let my work begin. Nodding with excruciating sluggishness, Thumpy swung into line behind a powerful half manticore and thrummed his fingers upon his knees in time to the rolling caravan themes. For three days, the cavalcade bumped down the road until they came to the mysterious forest of Dikipudo Timilof. And alas, the forest was filled with mysteries. All far and wide knew of the dangerous inhabitants of the forest. Half man, half horse, fool of roguery. However, the legend said that Nubudor lived in the Banat Canyon, and the only way to reach that canyon was through Tikiputo Timilof. Fear no peril, cried bold Quim. Danger is not, but stimulus to live lively life. Quim could not have spoken sooner. Before out of a thicket leapt a brigade of centaur Amazons. The mare circled the caravan, yelping and following. And Thumpy quietly began to cry to himself, wondering why he didn't just take a beating back on the road. Look at these fair-faced fellows, sisters! The lead mare yelped gleefully. But what are they doing here? Should we let them live? Good half-beasts. Quim proclaimed respectfully. No quarrel we seek with you. Let us absent ourselves from your woods and we shall be well. And living. No quarrel we have but a mere picadillo. Who trespasses in tiki puto dimi loaf without leave? To the place where land is declivitous, and the sky is full of obscurities, and the light is enshrouded in a nebulous glow. That, my lady, is our intention. Ah, you seek the place which is both sticky and sacred. The whole of the mighty wizard is also of the griffins and the wyverns and of the dragons. His pets! Go onward, but take a guide or else die. Beckoning with a clenched fist, the lead centaur signaled a sleek umber mare from the brigade and declared, This is Ye Shorestone, Fetus and Mustel, what a mighty.